Hello, young lovers, whoever you are. We're glad the love bug caught up with you, but we must insist that you do not allow his bite to affect your conduct while in this theater. Public demonstration of affection will not be tolerated. Enough said? That's a classic drive-in theater ad warning against teenage hanky-panky during the film. Ah, uh, but when faced with the terror of 1960s horror cinema, do you think those teenagers really even had a choice? I know this is going to come as a shocker, but humans did not evolve to watch horror movies. Our bodies and minds are home to deal with real-world physical threats, and horror movies simply hack the system. The sights and sounds of that horror movie stream into your skull to the brain's amygdala, which handles instantaneous emotional processing, especially of love, pleasure, fear, and terror. This unleashes an energizing cocktail of hormones. Adrenal glands pump out the stress hormone cortisol, which can impede insulin, causing a rise in blood sugar for a little extra fight or flight fuel. Your breath quickens, your heart races, your appetite stalls, your pupils dilate, you might even break a sweat, and all within three seconds of the scare. Nerve cells also start to release endorphins to combat injuries, and your brain releases the neurotransmitter dopamine. So you can think of a scary movie as a kind of drug. Ask a date to go see one with you, and you're essentially saying, hey, we don't know each other all that well, but let's share an artificial state of arousal with each other. And then there's a little something called misattribution of arousal, the process by which we mistake the cause of our bodily woo-woo feelings. It takes us back to a pivotal 1974 study known as the Capilano Suspension Bridge Experiment. Male test subjects marched across two bridges spanning the Capilano River in North Vancouver, Canada. One bridge was as stable as they come, while the other, well, that's exaggerating things a bit, but you get the idea. When the test subjects reached the other side, female interviewers conducted a survey. The males who had crossed the scary bridge filled out their questionnaires with stronger sexual imagery than the men on the safe bridge, and they were five times as likely to take the surveyor up on an offer to call her later in case they had any other questions about the experiment. What happened? Well, the men felt the bodily rush of crossing a wonky rope bridge, and then, when presented with new, pleasurable stimuli, their brains decided that surely this was the cause of that fluttery feeling in their bodies. Scientists believe this all has to do with the chemical dopamine, which feels like it's gushing out when we have that first rush of attraction or terror. Again, it comes back to shared mechanisms of reaction to stimuli. The study hasn't always held up to intense scrutiny, but it still seems to reveal something about human behavior for both males and females. So it stands to reason that a little misattributed arousal plays into any post-horror movie makeout session. But with humans, it's never so simple, is it? Horror movies, even the bad ones, are loaded with thematic and symbolic power. Psycho killers wield phallic weapons against wanton teens, and vagina-like aliens leap out from the shadows. Naked people pop out of the woodwork, turn into beasts, catch diseases, then transform into monsters, and the next thing you know, this lady's smooching a zombie, and we're weirdly okay with it. But even without all these human complexities, we can still find examples of the horror movie aphrodisiac in the natural world. Meet the splendid fairy wren, a small Australian bird that knows how to turn potential tragedy into a romantic pickup. Yes, the males belt out a special mating call immediately in the wake of a predatory butcher bird's call. I mean, hey, the females are already at maximum attention because of the butcher bird's murderous call. So the male fairy wren just fills in that awkward silence to follow with a hello ladies. It's a tactic that seems to work. Look, we can't guarantee results, and by all means choose your horror movie selection with care, but it seems scary movies are the perfect aphrodisiac, a body hacking dose of supernormal stimuli that leaves us aroused, disturbed, and in need of human contact. I said human contact! So which horror movie do you think makes for the best aphrodisiac? For me, it's On Golden Pond. Absolutely terrifying. What about you? Let us know in the comments below. And to keep the videos a coming, make sure to subscribe.